So hey guys, this week we are in Costa Brava, Spain and we're going to be taking you on a bit of a food adventure. Can't wait to eat and travel. So it's a beautiful day out, we have blue skies and I think that calls for a sailing trip. Good morning. Ready to go sailing? Yeah, absolutely. I think I might even go swimming too. Oh, living the life. Living the life. So how's the Vino Blanco, Audrey? Delicioso. Salud! So it is lunchtime here on the boat. What are we starting with? Yeah, so we're starting off with an appetizer. We've got Ooh. mussels and they've been drenched in a little bit of olive oil. There's some garlic and onions, so I oh can't my. wait to try this. Look at that thing of beauty. Just gonna go in. These are fresh. Yeah. yeah, that is delicious. Like, so juicy and so good. So lunch is served and we are having fideuwa on the boat. So have a look here. This is a seafood dish and it's made with pasta that's cooked in fish juice. And we've also got some prawns. So it's looking Look at the mass tasty. of prawns though. I know. Oh gosh, I can't wait to try this. It's so nice to let you go first. Mm. What a nice husband. That's so good. Wow. Tastes like seafood. mainland I'm feeling tanned and sun-kissed how about you yeah that was awesome it was so cool just going out in the Sun we've been in cold weather climates for a while and we had an epic meal so for me I'm looking like a lobster I am I'm getting properly sunburned over here adding to the freckle collection So next up we're at La Vigneta and this is a winery and a vineyard so we're going to be drinking some wine, doing a little tour and we're rocking with some pretty cool hats. It's going to be hard to give this one away, you know. So Sam has found a new career here in Costa Brava. What are you gonna do? I'm putting me to work here. So I'm gonna pick grapes and I'm gonna try it over here. All right, so first step, we actually have to try yeah. the grape to see if it's sweet enough. So let's make sure it's sweet. Mm. Is it ready or is it too sour? No, it's actually really sweet. It's yeah? Wonderful. Excellent. So let's go for it. So I'm holding it here. Uh -huh. I'm clipping here so as not to like slice off a finger. All right. And into the bucket. Okay, so I'm not actually picking them, I'm just eating them, but don't tell anyone. That sounds like you. You would do something like that. They're nice and sweet. Like, they're little grapes. Mm. Lots of seeds inside, but super, super sweet. So good. stomping some grapes this afternoon. In order to do so, I need my traditional Catalan hat, Catalan scarf, 
No, I'm ready to do this. And we're going barefoot. Quick correction, that was not a scarf, that was a belt. I'm wearing it around my waist. <laughs> Sam, tell us, what are you about to drink? I'm trying the grapes oh that God. you stepped on. Oh, with my bare feet? Without even, you're not even paying me to do this. I can't believe I, I'm willing to do it without being bribed. Oh. I'm getting one for you too. What? <laughs> Let's try it. That's actually really good. <laughs> Very sweet. off this vineyard tour than with wine, cheese, and cold cuts. And you know what? We earned this. We helped pick the grapes. We helped crush them. No, but that was actually an awesome wine tour, vineyard tour, because that's the first time we actually got to do those things before. Yeah. We normally just have you like walk around the property, they talk all about the place, but this was more of an experiential kind of thing, and I really, really appreciated that. Now time to taste the wine. That's awesome, that's a real full body red. And I've got some cheese to help wash it down. So tonight we are spending the night in a place called La Ferreria. And this hotel is like traveling back in time. I'm gonna have to give you a little tour quickly. Before we lose daylight. dinner we are having fast food and that has nothing to do with hot dogs, hamburgers or french fries. It's basically food that goes straight from the kitchen to your mouth with as little as handling as possible and the spread looks delicious so let's go get started. morning we are up very bright and early for something super exciting that I've never done before. <laughs> yeah we're taking a hot air balloon ride and it should be amazing like this is something we've never done and we really want to try it out. Yes yeah, so we're gonna be flying over the Pyrenees mountains and it should be spectacular. Let's go! Our balloon is almost filled up with hot air. We're going in Pumped. and we're going up. Pumped. You know what? Surprisingly, not so bad. I no, mean, now it's better. I was yeah. telling now it's better. I had a bit of a freak out going volcano. up, but now yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Volcano, okay. We're okay now. Um, this is How you doing, Nick? This is you. Salute. <laughs> Sam's putting on a brave face for the camera. It's all an act. So we've landed on solid ground and I have to say, I've never been so happy to have my two feet back on the ground. What do you think? Sam was a little nervous up there, but honestly, it was such a peaceful experience. Yeah, like you don't hear anything and you can just see, you know, the little towns and villages still asleep. So it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. I'd, I'd do it again. I would actually do it again too, believe it or not. 
with a gin and tonic first. Probably. So since we survived our flights and there were no major incidents, we get our certificate of completion. It's a pretty cool map. Check it out. I thought that was our captain's license to fly it ourselves. No, gotta earn that one. So this afternoon we're doing a bit of a taste test at El Celer de Can Roca. And this is the second highest rated restaurant in the whole world. It should be delicious. So I'm going to have a very unusual cocktail right now. So follow me over here. This looks like chocolate, but it's actually grapefruit juice and Campari. We have to pick it up very gently so as to not crack the skin. This over here is mm. our version of the fried calamari mm. rings. How's that? It bursts in your mouth. <laughs> it's wonderful. So next up we're going to start the appetizer and this is going to take us on a journey around the world. Check this out. I've never seen a meal plated this way. So we have to open wow, this fancy. carefully. Open up the bow tie and voila! And there is the world. Look at that. So this afternoon we're going to do a walking tour of Girona and it looks beautiful. It looks really colorful. But first up, we need to get ice cream because we need our energy for this walk. Okay, so we finally got our ice cream and apparently there is some kind of Game of Thrones reference here. It's called Ma Daurada and that means the golden hand. I don't really watch the show, so I'm not sure what that's Game of Thrones to. fans, please uh, please uh, fill us, us in. I'm sure door. you'll know. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Dun 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 <laughs> There's Look at that hand. Down. Turn it, turn, spin it around. Hello, Hello hand. Hello. So I'm just gonna bite this guy's fingers off. Feels kind of weird, like it really looks like a hand. <laughs> Hope it doesn't taste like a hand. Mm. Oh, let's see. It's orange inside. Oh wow. Is it fruity? It's kind of like a fruity popsicle, yeah. Tasty? Mm -hmm. Blood, bloody fingers. It's good. I like it. What's in it? it? Tastes like mango. Orange and mango popsicle. That's what we're having today. So this bridge was built by Monsieur Eiffel himself before the Eiffel Tower ever came to be. Costa Brava, I have to say we ate like kings and queens while we were here. Yeah, and we got a nice taste of the region in terms of all of the travel activities and things you can do as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely somewhere we'd like to come back and explore yeah. more in depth. Yeah, so we hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions about travel in Costa Brava, Spain, just leave them in the comments below. See you next time! Hola y bienvenidos a Madrid. This week we are in the Spanish capital and we are going to show you 25 of the best things to do in the city. We were beyond excited to come and visit Madrid. After all, this is a city renowned for its arts, cuisine and nightlife. With 10 days to spare, we decided to hit up some of the best sites and attractions and film a guide highlighting 25 things to do in Madrid. In this video, you can expect everything from lively markets and world-renowned museums to beautiful gardens and Spanish dishes. 
Now let's find out what the Spanish capital is all about. morning we are visiting Real Jardín Botánico which are the Royal Botanical Gardens here in Madrid and it's a beautiful space shaded lots of different plants from around the world and the place is actually massive so I'm gonna show you the map so you can get an idea of Whoa. how many little gardens you can visit and we've only covered a fraction of it so far yep Palacio Real de Madrid is one of the largest palaces in all of Europe. Technically, this is the official residence of the Spanish royal family. However, they choose to live in a smaller and more modest palace in the outskirts of town. The royal palace is open to visitors year-round. So another thing you can do at the palace here is check out the changing of the guard. We were here at 11 o'clock and that's when it started. noticing about our stay here in Madrid is that they love their gardens and their parks. Right now we are visiting a place called Jardines de Sabatini and again it's just a garden that's located behind the royal palace and it's a beautiful place to visit and there's hardly any tourists here so I recommend you come check it out. La Rosaleda is a massive rose garden located in the west end of the city. Every year during the month of May, a contest is held to select the most beautiful rose of them all. We missed the contest by a couple of months, but we still enjoyed wandering through the grounds. Meals were a big highlight during our visit to Madrid, especially gazpacho. Okay, so time for the first spoonful of gazpacho. Ho ho ho, baby. Mm. That is so good. It's tangy because of the tomato. It's served cold, so it's really refreshing. And this one has a lot more ingredients than salmorejo. So I just put in some chopped bell peppers, green and red peppers. Um, it's also got a bit of onions in there. And it was drizzled with olive oil on top. So great combination on a hot summer day. I'm just gonna keep enjoying this over here. Mm. So good. The Prado Museum holds one of the best collections of Spanish art. They have works by artists like Francisco de Goda, Diego Velázquez, and El Greco. Admission to the museum is free in the evenings, two hours before closing, but you'll need a few days to cover everything this museum has to offer. So at the moment we are visiting Parque del Buen Retiro, which is one of the biggest parks in the city, and we're just taking a little break in the shade because summer in Madrid feels like someone has turned on the blow dryer and they're just blowing it all over your body. It's like a wall of hot air hitting you in the face. So. We need to rest and cool down, people. 
Parque del Buen Retiro is a massive park in Madrid. It has beautiful boulevards for strolling, a large pond where you can rent rowboats, and plazas with trees that will make you feel like you've stumbled into Alice in Wonderland. One attraction you shouldn't miss when visiting Parque de Retiro is the Crystal Palace. It's a beautiful building that streams in natural sunlight and on occasion they host contemporary art exhibitions. Palacio de Velázquez is also located in the same park. It has red brick and tile architecture and inside you'll find temporary exhibitions organized through the Reina Sofia Museum. If you're in Madrid during the summer months, you can check out this book fair which is located just behind the botanical gardens. Cuesta de Moyano is a little hill lined with book stands and you can pick up literature ranging from philosophy to fantasy all for a couple of euros. We couldn't come to the capital and not try Spain's national dish, paella. Okay, so your mixed paella has arrived. Tell us about it. Yeah, the paella is finally here. So the mixed paella has a whole bunch of different things. Let's take a look down at it. Okay. So you can see that there's chicken, yep. we've got shrimp, we've got other kinds of seafood, we've got peas. So let's take the first bite here. my favorite Spanish food. The thing I like about it so much is that you have all these different ingredients and it just has such a, a flavorful sauce on top of the rice. It's just so good. Well, we certainly polished that off. So now let's talk about the price. Yeah, that was nice and filling. So in terms of price, it can vary widely. In more expensive, kind of like gourmet restaurants that really specialize in it, we've seen it go up to 30 or 35 euros. We've never actually ate somewhere like that. The place we went to was 11 euros and we thought it was a really good value. We're both really full now. And we've also, I've also seen it as an appetizer in some smaller types of restaurants and you can expect maybe to pay 7 or 8 euros for that. So next up we're going to visit the Temple of Debit, which is an ancient Egyptian temple that's here in Madrid. And now it wasn't stolen by the Spaniards, it was actually given as a gift because they were building a dam in Egypt in the same area where the temple used to be located and it was at risk of flooding. So it was given as a gift in order to preserve it. And it's actually a really popular place to watch the sunset and there's lots of people hanging out here. So we're gonna show you a bit of that. Here we are visiting the home of Real Madrid Football Club, easily one of the most famous teams in the world, not just in Spain. And we're gonna take a little walk around outside. And you have a new hat to represent. I just did buy one of these. Santiago Bernabeu Stadium is home to the Real Madrid Football Club. This is one of the most popular football teams in the world with a huge fan base. Another thing to do in Madrid is actually go out and experience the nightlife. So tonight we're out having a nice little drink. I've got tinto de verano, Sam's got sangria, and I do have to warn you the nightlife in Madrid does get started pretty late. We're out right now at like 9.30 and that's super early. Normally people get together past midnight and things keep going to like 4 or 5 in the morning. So you've been warned. So what have been your first impressions of Madrid's nightlife? Pulsating, in a word. <laughs> Recently we were out with friends and we didn't get back home until about 4.35 in the morning. Definitely a night to remember. The San Miguel Market is the place to come if you want to sample a wide array of Spanish dishes all under one roof. You'll find everything ranging from seafood to meats and sausages, as well as glasses of sangria and tinto de verano.
Plaza Mayor is Madrid's central square and it is lined with little cafes and restaurants. It's a nice place to enjoy a cup of coffee and do a bit of people watching, but you will pay a lot more than you would elsewhere in the city. breakfast time here in Madrid. We've just rolled out of bed at 10 a.m., which is a bit unusual, but we're here at a local cafe and we're going to have a traditional Spanish breakfast. So we have ordered hot chocolate with churros and porras. So we're going to show you what those are like in just a few minutes. I'm actually having the proper churros, which is a deep fried dough. And what I found interesting is when I've had this in Canada, it's more of a dessert, but over here in Spain, it is a breakfast, and it's a very popular breakfast item. So let's dip that right into the chocolate. Show us how it's done. Break off a piece here. Well, and that hot chocolate is as thick as it gets. It must have some kind of special ingredients that make it especially thick and rich. It's like mud. Look, chocolate sludge. Wow. Let me just say, I can get very used to having this as my normal breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> is that good? So what I find unique about the Spanish churros is the shape. When we had these in South America, they were usually like long little strips. Um, and also, there's no filling in these. I still haven't come across any Spanish churros that have fillings. Whereas in South America, they were stuffed with chocolate, vanilla pudding, dulce de leche. So that's another difference. Now, let's dip this. This is so good. It's like a wishbone. <laughs> Puerta del Sol means Gate of the Sun and it's one of the busiest spots in Madrid. It's a great spot to do a bit of shopping, catch a street performance and then grab a quick bite. La Almudena is a Catholic church which sits directly across from the Royal Palace. The church is open to visitors free of charge but a small donation is suggested to upkeep the building. Now we're visiting the Oriental Plaza, which is right by the palace. It's a nice kind of scenic area to walk, and you can see all kinds of plants from Asia. another breakfast here in Madrid. Today we are having the Madrileño, which is the local breakfast that everybody likes to eat in the city. And if you look down here, you'll be able to see this is tortilla, which is a potato and egg type of dish. So it's kind of like a potato and egg omelette. And it is delicious. It comes with a side of bread. And I can't wait to dig in. La -la. Yeah. Mm. So good. So good. This is your favorite breakfast. Mm -hmm. It really is. I've been eating it daily. And on my birthday, I had it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's how much I like it. The Queen Sophia Museum focuses on 20th century art. It forms part of the Golden Triangle of Art, which includes the Prado and the Thyssen. You can also visit the Tissin Bornemitsa, an art museum in the city that was once the second largest private collection in the world. Final thoughts on your time in Madrid? Well, I really enjoy the city and I really found that it's super walkable. We were here for 10 days and we hardly had to take the metro at all. We just took the bus once when we were visiting the stadium, but the rest of the time we were able to walk wherever we needed to go. And also, I think it's a great city for art lovers. There are so many galleries and museums to check out, and a lot of them are free in the evening, so keep that in mind. And now it is your turn. What did you think of Madrid? You know what? I absolutely love Madrid. It's a city that just really clicked with me. 
we have a lot of friends that are living here long term and prior to coming here I had no idea like you know why would someone want to come to Madrid now I totally get it I love the culture I love the food I love the nightlife everything is really cheap I go to the grocery store and I can get a one liter thing of wine for just over a euro it's just a really affordable fun city to be in and it's somewhere I hope I have a chance to come back to again soon and that is a wrap of our time in Madrid we had a splendid time and we're truly sad to say goodbye to the city but that just means we'll have to come back again if you have any travel tips for Madrid, feel free to share those in the comments below. And once again, for more city guides and travel videos, be sure to subscribe to our channel. This week we are exploring another Spanish city. We are in Barcelona and this video is going to highlight 25 things to do here. Barcelona. After a few days in a Spanish capital, we headed over to Catalonia to see what this popular seaside city has to offer. We ended up discovering an eclectic mix of funky architecture, distinct neighborhoods, and stretches of golden beaches. It was vibrant, it was stylish, and it was addicting. Here's a look at what we got up to during our visit to this world-class city. It wouldn't be a proper visit to Barcelona without going to the beach at least once. So first things first, we headed down to Barceloneta Beach, which is popular with locals and travelers who don't want to trek out too far in search of waves and sandy shores. The sun was out, the water was inviting, and the beach was packed. Chillin' like a villain. I hope the door is planning to close soon because we are about to take off. There we go. Oh. Next up, we took the cable car to Montjuic for a look at the city from above. It was a brief journey, but it gave us a great perspective of how spread out Barcelona really is. So we just finished riding the cable car and now we have arrived on top of Montjuic, which is a hill located in Barcelona. You get some great views of the city and they also have a lot of different attractions here. So first up, we are going to visit Castel de Montjuic, which is an old fortress here atop the city. So we've got our tickets, let's go in. Over the years, the Castel de Montjuic has played many roles, including military fortress, prison, and now museum. guys you've got to come here early in the day there are sections of this place that we have all to ourselves park well is not your average park this outdoor space was designed by Antoni Gaudi and as such it makes you feel like you've tumbled down the rabbit hole and suddenly set foot in the world of Alice in Wonderland inside the park you can admire the serpentine mosaic benches a colonnaded pathway that seems to attract lots of performers and a colorful salamander made of broken tiles. So up next we are going to visit one of the most iconic churches in all of Barcelona. This is Sagrada Familia and it was designed by Antoni Gaudi. And this church has actually been under construction for decades. I remember I visited about eight years ago and it was still under construction. There was drywall everywhere and bags of concrete. And that hasn't changed. You can still see the cranes in the background. So we're going to show you that in a second. visiting Barcelona Football Club, one of the most famous teams in the world, and I just picked up a hat, and let me tell you, that is the most crazy team store I've ever seen. Right now it is the off season, so unfortunately we can't watch a football game, but there are stadium tours, and if you want to get merchandise, you get into that fan store because it is absolutely packed. We are about to enter Mercato de la Boqueria, which is one of the most popular markets in the whole city. And you can get food to go or maybe some fresh produce, some healthy juices, so we're going to take a walk through. Whether you want to enjoy some tapas or pick up some fresh produce to take away, this market is not short of options.
La Rambla is probably the busiest street in the whole city. This tree-lined pedestrian-only boulevard stretches for 1.2 kilometers and is packed with street performers, food vendors, and pop-up souvenir shops. If there's one thing to love about seaside cities, it's that they always have lively boardwalks, and Barcelona proved to be no different. There were joggers, skateboarders, bikers, and rollerbladers. And if you needed a break in the shade, there were lots of benches where you could kick back, relax, and enjoy the views of the marina. As you head down the boardwalk, you can also swing by the Museum of Catalan History, which seeks to make Catalan history more accessible to the public. This morning we are exploring the neighborhood of Barrigotti. This is a pretty cool area because they have a lot of narrow little lanes, courtyards, plazas, so you can just go and explore without much of a plan and see what you stumble upon. The Gothic Quarter truly is a beautiful neighborhood to wander on foot. The twisting lanes can make it seem a bit confusing, but you just never know what you're going to discover around each bend. Wandering around the Gothic neighborhood, you can check out the Gothic market. It has a lot of different antiques and flea market types of items. In the neighborhood, you'll also find Barcelona Cathedral, which is a Gothic cathedral that was constructed between the 13th and 15th centuries. Santa Maria del Pi is another nearby church. Artists like to set up shop in the square right outside the church so you can also browse some of the artwork on your way out. Like a lot of European cities, Barcelona also has a triumphal arch. And what's cool about this place is that it's a really open space and you can see a lot of people just walking around. It's kind of a good place to just hang out and have a leisurely stroll. Casa Batlo is one of Gaudi's architectural masterpieces. The facade is covered in beautiful mosaics and the balconies have a skeletal quality that also makes you feel like you're going to a masked ball. Casa Mila, also known as La Padrera, is another work by Gaudi. The building has an organic and curvy exterior and unique twisting chimneys with human characteristics. Gaudi gets a lot of attention in the city, however, Barcelona was home to many other influential architects, including Josep Puig i Cadafalch, who designed several local buildings, including Casa de los Punches. If you find yourself in Montjuic, you can also consider visiting one of the parks and botanical gardens found on the hill. We chose the lesser known Lauribel Gardens and it was a nice little retreat. The idea for the Moreau Foundation came from Moreau himself, who wanted to create a space where young artists could experiment with contemporary art. Just a few streets down you'll find the National Art Museum of Catalonia, MNAC for short, which showcases a mix of church paintings and Catalan art from the 19th and 20th centuries. Then just down the steps from the museum, you'll find the magic fountain of Montjuic. We made the mistake of visiting in the daytime, but it's at night when it really shines in a colorful display of lights. Also, if you're planning to be in Barcelona for a while, you can consider signing up for the bike sharing system, which makes it super easy to get around the city. Wax museums have popped up all over the world, and in Barcelona's, you can pose next to Spanish celebrities and royalty. 
The Palace of Catalan Music is a concert hall where you can catch performances that range from classical to Catalan song. Definitely one for the music lovers. It's kind of hard to believe our time in Barcelona has expired. Mm -hmm. So final thoughts? Well, it was a really fun city to visit. Great architecture, really nice beaches. It's very lively, especially at night. The only downfall is that we were here in the middle of summer, so it was super hot and super crowded, and sometimes that made it a little bit difficult to enjoy, especially at midday or in the mid-afternoon. So keep that in mind, maybe consider visiting in the springtime, fall, winter. Well, so what did you think of the city? It's definitely a fun city. We had a lot of fun going to the beaches. One thing that's really different about this city compared to some other European cities though is that it is really spread out. In order for us to visit all these attractions, we had to chunk them into groups and visit them day by day. Uh, overall, it was a decent city. It didn't quite click with me the same way that Madrid did, but that's just personal preference, I suppose. And that is a wrap for Barcelona. Our five days in the city flew by and while this guide didn't cover everything, we hope we were able to give you a feel of what this fun seaside city has to offer. As always, if you have any suggestions of things to do around town, feel free to add them in the comments below. And if you want to catch our latest travel videos, don't forget to hit subscribe. Well, hello. So today is July 23rd, which means it's my birthday. So Sam and I are going to take a little day trip. We've been staying in Madrid, but Toledo is only 30 minutes away by train. So we're going to head out and have some birthday adventures in a new city. To get the birthday girl some lunch. Yeah. So we decided to walk into the city, which was maybe a mistake considering it's almost 40 degrees out. Should have just grabbed a taxi, but at least they have these escalators that help you reach the summit of the, the center of the old town, I guess. So yeah, it's nice being in the shade and not having to climb steep. And it's kind of funny because just outside of the escalators is the, are these old ruins. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have something very modern and then you have the ruins right beside it. Yeah, quite the contrast. So we made it to the top. And this is our reward. Check out these views. Birthday girl. What is your starter? Alright, so we found a nice little restaurant and I've ordered gazpacho which is a cool tomato soup with onions, peppers and cucumbers but you can't see any of that because it looks like they've just liquefied it and turned it into a bit of a, a cream. But let's try it. Mm. Refreshing? That is so refreshing on a day like today. And it's a little bit tart and tangy, which I really like. Mm. I could drink this out of a glass, it's so good. And what is your entree? I'm trying something I've never tried before. It's called Miga Stel Pastor. And mm -hmm. if you look down here, it's got meat, it's got some kind of breadcrumbs here, mm -hmm. and it also has veggies. I think these may be peppers. Ooh. So let's take a bite with the meat and the breadcrumbs. How is it? Mm. It's really good. I think that's a piece of like chorizo meat. Nice. Spicy. And what does the birthday gal have? So I'm having a type of tortilla, which is basically potatoes and egg, kind of like a, an omelette style meal. Um, and this also has ham in it. And I've got some pork right underneath. They've soaked it in ketchup, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's all right. I actually had this for breakfast today and that was a little bit better. So I see your main dish has arrived. You know what, this is actually my favorite Spanish dish that I've tried since I've been in Spain. It's called paella. Take a look down here. Yeah. We're going to be doing a bit more of a dedicated video to this soon, but for now you can basically know that it's a mixed type of rice with mm -hmm. seafood and vegetables. Alright, let's take a bite of that. So good. It's 
got a really rich and kind of creamy sauce. I just absolutely love this. And over here in Spain, wine is like water. I had a choice between water and wine, so I got my own bottle. I think I made the right decision. I'm glad we got about a 30 minute break in between our, uh, our main course and dessert. What do you have? I am having flan. And I don't really know how to describe this dessert, except to say that it's popular in South America and in Spain. And your mom makes a really good flan. Yes, and the brown stuff you see, it's kind of like caramelized sugar. But I really can't explain the dessert itself because I have no idea what it's made with, even though I've eaten it my whole life. <laughs> right, and I have one of my all-time favorites, arroz con leche. Mm. And this is a rice pudding. And unlike you, I can't explain what's in it. There's milk, <laughs> there's rice, <laughs> and, and there's cinnamon. cinnamon. <laughs> and you know who makes a good uh, rice pudding? My mom, too. Mm -hmm. Let's stir take a bite. That, stir that cinnamon around a bit. It's really good. It's really creamy. I can tell they've, they've used like maybe even a cream instead of a milk. Nice. And lots of sugar and cinnamon. So is it served hot or cold here? Uh, cold. Nice. We are now visiting the Alcazar, which is the one building that dominates the city skyline. And they also have a really cool military museum. And normally I wouldn't be into that, but because it's so hot outside, it's actually been really nice being indoors with AC, just learning a bit of the history by force. <laughs> that Spain is more of a winter destination. All we've been doing since we've come here is sweating like pigs. So we are hiding indoors again. We found a little corner store with lots of fans and popsicles. So try to cool down here, people. and now we're gonna head back to the train station and try to get back to Madrid a little bit earlier than planned. 